So it's the 9th February 2019, the Saturday, and it's precisely 3.30 p.m. Look at that. Mm. All right. Anyway, most of the time, first things first, uh, what brings you to Latvia and what are your impressions? What bring me, uh, brought me to Latvia? Um, very, very simple. I haven't been to, to the homeland mm. uh, before. So, yeah, yeah, I decided. I decided to 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 to, to see this spot. I I haven't been to any of of the Baltic countries, to Estonia, to Lithuania, uh, to Latvia either. So yeah, Latvia is, is the very first um, from the Baltic countries that I decided to to to, to visit. Mm -hmm. And what my impressions? Um, I've just um, I was strolling around today um, um, around the the old town and um, a bit far um, Elizabeth Yella. Uh, Albert Albert Yellow. Mm. So um, uh, what broke me? I, I wanted I wanted to see the only thing I, I knew about about uh, Latvia before I I came. Um, it will uh, that it's um, it's a uh, it's a place with um, with a lot of um, Art Nouveau buildings, Art Nouveau mm. architecture, as well as I know seven, seven around seven hundred fifty. Art Nouveau buildings, um, some of them built by Eisenstein, the, the, the father of, of Sergei Eisenstein, um, this, this very famous film director. I didn't know that before, to be honest. And yeah, I was strolling around, I took a lot of pictures, um, mostly of this nice Art Nouveau architecture. So you are interested in architecture? I'm not architect, um, I'm not even an expert in architecture. I, I like archi architecture and I, 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 I always appreciate um, when I am able to, 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 to let's say, to, to touch bank, bank in, in, in places where it's quite genuine, as for example in Malta, uh, Valletta. I, before before I, I went there I didn't know that, that Valletta is, as, uh, as well as I remember in, in Guinness uh, World Record book listed as, as a place where, with most um, um, uh, most buildings uh, not uh, most buildings uh, I forgot um, um, this is this is the place uh, with um, with most sighting uh, buildings um, on one um, square kilometers. Ah. I, didn't, I didn't. I even didn't know. So yeah, um, I'm. I'm. I'm in, yeah, I'm interested in, in architecture. Although although I'm not. I'm not an expert in this area. Mm. So it seems to, seems to me interesting that people would be willing to go to a foreign country, and one of the main points to see is the buildings, because I get every every country usually has some some other types of architecture mm -hmm. right but it seems it seems so interesting that that would make an impression on people yeah so, b b because it's it's reflection of, of 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 their for me mentality of their of their history as well for example if you if you go if are you, you sure i'm sure for example if you go if you go to krakow you see this nice nice architecture krakow is beloved by by tourists uh, much more than for example warsaw and if it comes to architecture, Warsaw has completely different architecture, and why I'm uh, I said that it's a reflection of history because Warsaw has been destroyed, totally destroyed during the Second World War right, in 1995 percent, yeah. and right now it's a it's a huge architectural eclecticism in mm -hmm. Warsaw. So it's not that beautiful like like Krakow and Krakow. You have you have a lot of a lot of um, older buildings in Warsaw. There is there are no such a building because those buildings have, uh, have been destroyed, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's why that's why the the, the 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 current phase, let's say, of of Warsaw is 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 perfect reflection what what we experienced several years ago. And um, Warsaw is not not easy place to 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 fall in love with. But if if you if you look closer, it's it's really nice and it's it's, it's really magic. Uh, place, so that that's why for for me it's definitely definitely uh, architecture is reflection of of your his of your history. To be honest, I, I usually tell people that my I said my my opinion is that from the Western European countries, the Netherlands are the best, and from the Eastern European countries, Poland is the best. Really, but but I'm not talking about architecture. I'm just talking generally as a country, as a society. Uh, atmosphere people that, yeah, uh, yeah okay i just i just well you might correct me but i just feel that poland has the best of both worlds they have sort of the big country attitude towards many different things 
but then again they have the economy of the eastern europeans that to just build to just produce to just do some business and so they have the they have the nice mentality mix because they because they didn't have the spoils of of the last century as as let's say germany or, or france did but uh, but now when when they are competing with them i think they are in a much better position to actually grow you know in um, from economical point of view we are we are competing with you know um with what with um with lower um salaries as of now still, still well you mean you, do but you do you mean migrant workers um because you, no, you, you, you are just a lot i mean to how many polish people uh, are living there 60 uh, million no 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 absolutely mm. not uh 38 oh really yeah 38 is um, it is it like france no we are we are uh smaller than france uh germany 80 millions i yeah. believe and also uh, france probably 60 yeah yeah perhaps uh and spain, spain, maybe spain 40, 40? 40 something like that 40 yeah. so poland um uh 38 and right now with huge ukrainian um uh migration wave oh really uh, uh, non-official um statistics uh, says um three millions wow. three mi- really, really it's it boosted yeah, but, but ukrainian people are also nice mm. right i mean oh, it's, it's the, a good mix Polish people, uh, it's, Ukrainian it's, it's, people. I, think, like I, think, I think um it's it's uh, we have we've quite uh, quite similar mentality quite right? still I think I think uh glad to uh, to hear that, that that you think that that Poland is something between between east and west um you know what my my, my criteria was for that in, no? a, in a general sense um, when I was driving through Poland I saw big new uh, roadways mm-hmm. and I saw big shopping malls right and i mean when i was in germany i noticed that nobody was working on a sunday mm-hmm. whereas i'm used to having the ability to go every day uh, even on a sunday to the grocery store for instance mm-hmm. and the same is true for poland yeah now but they just are bigger in everything they do they're just bigger they do it on a more bigger scale and so as it seems to me very nice and you know what i i noticed uh, Polish drivers drive really fast. Uh, Even on a sm- on a small road, they drive like I would on a highway. Uh, Polish drivers um, really. Um, I, I even do, uh, do not want, uh, want to start this this discussion about about Polish drivers because because Polish drivers um, are really crazy for me. Really, so uh, if if you're driving on a Polish highway, just just be careful, really, uh, because because they they may be very dangerous. They may be even aggressive. Uh, on this well, it's, it uh, seems that they are fairly nice. They just drive fast. They're nice. Okay, so you're the fir- ver- uh, first person uh, who said that, that Polish drivers uh, <laughs> drive nicely, let's say, but fast. Okay. For, well, for they didn't. They didn't harass. Uh, really? Is what I'm saying. I mean, they, they didn't. I mean, they drive close, and once they have the opportunity, they just drive by you. Okay. So so. At all least my that's friends... what I got. Okay. So good. Good. Glad to, glad to hear you. You 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 got this impression because because a lot of a lot of people. Uh, my sister. Uh, including uh, she is a very good driver um, and uh, yeah and and she she's very often afraid of of, of, of other members of, of road hmm. um, no no really um, uh, for example um, in Ireland uh, Irish drivers it's only by my private opinion they are they are not dangerous they are sometimes they are, they are driving thoughtlessly uh, they do not pay attention to to some some duties on the road. They they, they, they drive um, also um, relatively about, fast. Are you talking about Polish or uh, Irish? Right now about I- Irish. Uh, about Ireland, yeah. Right. But but they are not aggressive. And Polish driver uh, drivers, in my opinion, may be aggressive uh-huh. yeah, on, on the road. So glad glad to hear you didn't experience um, this dark side of of of, of a Polish uh, Polish temper. The only the only stereotype I've heard about Pol- Poland is that the Germans have a saying that today it is stolen, tomorrow it's in Poland. Oh yeah, um, a few years ago, a few years ago there was, um, um, I don't remember it, it was television um, advert or, or um, advert in a newspaper. Um, it, 
it was advertising of of tra- a travel agency. I'm saying something like that. I'm I'm rephrasing because I I, I cannot recall it um, exactly. It was something. Uh, Poland is a very beautiful country. Go there and explore. Um, uh, your car is already there. And it was a huge scandal. It was a huge scandal. They, they, um, uh, after a very short time period, they, they, they removed this, this advert. Funny. Uh, but it was funny. funny. It was it, funny. It was funny. Really, it, for was me, it, it was from funny. Polish? Uh, from no, Polish no. It was, it was, it, it was uh, a German travel agency. Uh, and you know, yeah, I, 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 I don't blame them. I don't blame them. In, in nineties, um, uh, so um, uh, last century in nineties, uh, uh, if, if most of of Cars, chief, were from Poland. Hmm. Right now, I, I know, uh, I know uh, it. It has changed, but but in nineties, um, short after after um, uh, eighty nine, uh, this huge switch, hmm. and uh, if if most um, car uh, chiefs were from Poland, I, I really don't blame them. But right now, um, it uh, the situation has been changed. I remember uh, that uh, that. Germans um, had this um, this term uh, Polish economy, uh, Polish Wirtschaft, mm. and it was it was quite um, quite negative, uh, saying okay, Polish economy. This is something that that almost doesn't exist. It's it's something that that's so so clumsy and chaotic. And right now, this 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 term um, changed it um, uh, its meaning. Sure. Because Polish economy is, is quite good right now. Uh, as uh, in my opinion, is is quite. Um, um, it's uh, in short term, short term. Um, that what what poli- Polish politicians uh, are doing is is uh, quite short term. I don't think so. It, 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 it this prosperity would be a long term because it's. How? It, why it, do you think so? Because because it de- uh, uh, based on on benefits, and you cannot you cannot just just give and give 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 give, because because. Uh, you also produce. It, well, uh, but but we we spend more than we produce. This is this is my my, my opinion. I Margaret Thatcher said um, several years ago. She's not my idol at all. Um, mm. She said uh, government doesn't have its own money because because this is this is money from 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 uh, taxes. So they are people's money. Mm. Let's say. And if you give uh, someone someone else um, uh, doesn't get something. So this is, this is, we used to say in Poland that this is um, uh, like a um, short blanket. Let's say if mm-hmm. you if you put blanket on your on your feet, um, your head is without blanket. If you put your your blanket um, over your head, your feet will get cold. You mm-hmm. know you, you you cannot stretch blanket. You you can just just move in in uh, different directions. I get the point. But do you think that there's really a problem in the long term with the Polish? I I think so. Economy? I think so. Like right now, right really? now, unemployment rate is is very low in Poland. Uh, I, I believe uh, Czech Republic have two and a half. Then Germany around three and three and a half Poland. So this is this this is a record, really record. Um, it's. Um, uh, before Poland joined the European Union, uh, together with Latvia in 2004, um, mm. short before that, um, unemployment rate was extremely high, extremely. Uh, for a few uh, months, um, it exceeded even 20%. It was 20, 3, Pe- 4, something like people that. People probably uh, still but earned some money, right? They just didn't pay tax, right? Uh, you mean because it's the thing about, uh, for instance, the Spanish economy or the Greece economy. Mm-hmm. People nowadays uh, say that, oh, the unemployment rate is so high. Yeah. Yes, of course, but it's just because they don't go through the whole bureaucratic process of establishing a legal uh, relationship between between employers and employees. Mm-hmm. So they just pay cash, basically no taxes, no accounting. You mean the black market? You, yeah, that, that's okay. what I, that's what I mean. I think I think it's um you know if if if, we, if it would be that bad in in Greece as 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 newspapers um, describe, it would be um. A, Really a disaster, but but those people are still existing. You know, it's mm-hmm. uh, uh, perhaps it's it's worse um, compared to to this uh, to the previous situation, to the situation that they used to live. For example, they they, they used to have really good good life, even in Greece. Uh, but 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 right now um, it's it's much worse. But it's not that bad. So it's. I would imagine. I would imagine it's just that yes, they are not really used to the way of handling those those 
sort of bureaucratic things as the northern Europeans are used to. But in a in a in a, in a let's say wealth index, I think still southern Europe is fairly okay. It's just that now with all those um, rescue plans and not everything mm-hmm. like that, um, the European Union is imposing some reforms, especially when it comes to um, accounting and reports mm. and everything like that. Because yeah. I've heard that they, in many, many coastal uh, cities, didn't have e- even a land book for those big, um, big properties in mm. Greece. Which is a, so, such a, such a, I don't know, 1800s, 1700s kind it's... of thing. In the 21st century, everybody should have the possibility to establish a land book, ever see who is the owner. Mm. Just simple, right? Because usually the land book is for, for taxation purposes. For, so the state knows which should pay the, the, the property tax. But as far as I remember, some, some, um, some analyzer, some analytic person t- said that, yeah, Greece didn't have any accounts of I don't know how many properties. I mean, you you saw there was clearly a, a big mansion, a big millionaire's villa, but nobody in the state could tell you who the owner was, right? So yeah, their their land registry was almost non-existent for in several cases. It was it was so so clumsy. I I, I remember I read them in a newspaper. Um, that a lot of people, a lot of people didn't pay tax at all, didn't pay ta- taxes in, in Greece at all. They, um, I remember one case when um, the revenue office asked for um, um, for a register of swimming pools in Athens, in in the outskirts of Athens, Athens as well, and then uh, twelve people um, uh, submitted the forms. Mm-hmm. And they said, okay, twelve swimming pools, something, something wrong, because some outskirts, some, some of the uh, city districts are really rich, and there mm-hmm. are um, uh, more than twelve pools in Athens at mm-hmm. all. And they used Google Maps to to see how many pools are uh, are uh, located in the, mm-hmm. in the area. And it actually, they, out, they who could have done that in the first place, right? Yeah, and you know what what uh, what uh, turned out? It turned out that probably there several was, hundred. Uh, several thousand. It was twelve oh. or eleven thousand, really. So um, only. <laughs> only <laughs> so can, can can you imagine? Can you imagine that that uh, all remaining people um, uh, didn't register the, uh, their swimming pool uh, pools at all because they didn't want to pay taxes? And yeah. swimming swimming pools. There only one um, uh, one example. Uh, perhaps I, I I shouldn't I shouldn't discuss other can, uh, country uh, issues because Why because. Not? I mean, Go ahead. Well, um, uh, because uh, it's it's based. I'm I'm not I'm not a citizen of this country, and my my knowledge is only based. Uh, I, I've read a, I have read a lot. Uh, only based on uh, some articles, some books, and so on. Mm-hmm. I um, I still think that that the, 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 the only country I can I can I can discuss in detail is is my home country. Although I right now I'm not that sure because I I, I live in. I live abroad for two and a half years, but but uh, it's still vivid for me. So what it's is in my country? So what is the thing you do in Ireland? Um, I work in a um, in a software corporation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm supporting partners uh, that build their own solutions, add-ons, um, applications using our our technology and infrastructure. Is is uh, Worldwide is a huge um, huge corporation uh, that um, provides other partners, other end clients with. Um, with uh, very various software, it's a B two B, so business to business software. Should I have I probably heard the company? Uh, the company it's called Is it SAP. Known? SAP. Mm-hmm. But it's a German company. Yeah, right? exactly. It it has been established in Germany in in uh, seventy seventy two, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but right now it's worldwide company and it empl- it employs roughly one hundred thousand people worldwide. Exactly. And and they have a branch in Ireland. Yeah, they have. They is have, it for is it for tax purposes? Uh, well, they have uh, they have uh, branches <laughs> all over the world. For example, in uh, yeah, but Ireland is Ireland, somehow, you know, Ireland, somehow yeah, 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 this you know, relief, yeah. attracting. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Th- that, that's true. That's true. Um, it's you know uh, only be, uh, that's why that's why a lot of a lot of worldwide companies um, establish their their 
European headquarters in, in Ireland, for example, mm. Apple, for example, Facebook, for example, yeah. Google. But SAP, SAP is not one of them. SAP is not one of them because because it's a huge company. They, they have even two offices in, in tiny New Zealand. So, yeah. Two offices? Yeah. Oh, yeah New in Zealand, New Zealand that's that big. But I, I guess New Zealand is so so um, remote that it might be the case that it's easier to just have two separate offices than one office for the whole region but i, I, I was i was surprised because they because probably because probably one is more related to one region and the other to another right but but new zealand is so tiny and we have we have also offices in australia few offices oh. in australia so no oh, right. it's uh, new zealand australia so i i i, uh, I would have some problems if you if you would ask me uh, where um, my company um, doesn't have uh, offices really. Well, I, I in don't Latvia, they Latvia. don't. Really? Sure, I think okay. I don't think they okay. do. Okay, perhaps in Iceland they did, they do not have um, an office in Iceland. I wouldn't be surprised if they have some form of representation, mm -hmm. but it's probably mostly legal stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because if some let's say let's say my uh, my institution. I've heard that they will sometime in the future uh, ask SAP to develop their not necessarily accounting system, but the warehouse management management uh, software sort of basically for managing warehouses, right? And uh, yeah, well, since that is a public institution, it will be related probably to legal tender uh, procedures, and who knows how how long we will still need to wait. But uh, I, once I heard that SAP w is planned to be uh, a developer for the next type of software, I was relieved because now the one we have, yeah, it's not really, it's not really working that that well. Okay. And and, and I guess the the government paid some millions for that. Uh, not because it's not really as usable as it should be. Right, and it's not really user friendly as the interface should be. So, as far as I know, SAP doesn't have such issues most of the time. SAP is usually quite good with uh, developing software for businesses that really appreciate the, the things they need. Yeah, the product, the product, as well as you know, the product is uh, product. We have a massive portfolio, and uh, we have se uh, several products, um, and. Uh, they are they are really really good. So it's always it's always a question how uh, how the product has been um, the whole project has um, has been implemented because um, uh, sometimes um, very often it's a, it's a fault of, of of implementing how it has been deployed. So actually, if you if you have any prior experience or let's say if SAP has any prior experience with developing software for armies, I would be more interested to know about it because I'm talking about the army, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you have already some cases where, where it's working smoothly, or at least some, uh, some, some cooperation has been established, it would probably uh, allow us to move much more faster forward, right? Mm -hmm. if, if there's a real case already established. Okay, I I believe I believe some some army uh, some armies uh, are using uh, are using our, our, our Prob software. Probably the probably the, f probably the first question would be what does the German army use, right? Yeah. Because as far as I know, German the German army has many problems, with not just the inventory but also the public expenditures. Okay. I mean that's what that's what I hear, that that they basically spend money, really really unwise. And uh, and uh, one one of the recent most funny th funniest things was that I had that it turned out that um, the defense uh, ministry of Germany had spent one I think it was one point two million euros for uh, for a report from a private company sort of as a as a research or, or consulting company and it was for sort of. Um, not decorating, but sort of for uh, not developing also sort of to basically place bunk beds in the rooms of the of the dorms designing or not really design? because what they showed was just the standard just the standard rooms with two beds one mm -hmm. above the other and a couple of closets that's it 
right? And so, yeah, they, they paid basically 1.2 million euros for a report to say how to best fit the rooms. And what they came up with was basically already the, the, the norm everywhere, right? Two bunk beds, a couple of closets, and yeah, I think it's some a, lamps. I think it's a, it's a big issue for, for many companies that they um, overpay for, for some services, especially for audit or, or for, for, for... It for seems like consulting companies are exactly. all the rage, yes. But I would guess it's just because they can get away with it. I mean, th there seems no... that There doesn't seem any restrictions when it comes to uh, public expenditures and consulting. Because always you can say, well, I'm looking for improvements mm -hmm. and uh, the private sector can can greatly benefit us, right? And nobody really takes any notice afterwards. If, did, did you implement something? Did you really improve something in the real life conditions? Not really, right? But a couple of years have passed, a couple of million euros have been spent. Some, some uh, has, somebody has got the money, so... Somebody is, uh, somebody is the benefactor of that for sure. Yeah, that's. Um, so, what would you say? Uh, what, what is your everyday work uh, like? Um, well, it, it depends. In the, um, uh, because um, every day is different. Um, uh, sometimes um, I get a lot of uh, partner inquiries. Some uh, sometimes uh, less. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and yeah, yeah, I am. Um, um i am their i am their advisor and uh, i'm supporting partners uh, as mentioned before um who are um, developing developing their their own um, solutions so mm -hmm. um uh, first i explain them how our program works and what they can expect from our program uh, what are the licenses we can offer them uh, how the licenses can be used what are the additional uh, service what are the um, uh, additional resources they can um, uh, they can order what uh, the resources uh, how the resources can be used what are their uh, licenses restrictions and then once once they set uh, their uh, system systems uh, up uh, and then they are in development phase. I I, I also I also um, uh, reply to to, to several um, technical questions. Although I'm not technical, if if I'm not able to uh, to um, answer their questions straight away, then I, I follow up uh, mm -hmm. on, on on them with uh, with the members of, of technical team, uh, with some engineers, with some developers. So yeah, I'm 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 supporting in a in a quite quite. Um, um, uh, vast area, I would say. And how did you decide to go to SAP or to Ireland? To Ireland, uh, in I, general. I, uh, well, um, uh, at my previous company, I I felt that that I reached uh, all that I could, and I started uh, looking for a job, uh, but but not in Poland. Uh, abroad in three countries because of the language in Germany, um, UK and Ireland and Ireland was from the very beginning my, my favorite destination and uh, I got an offer uh, prior to um, to Irish offer I got an offer from, from Munich uh, a few weeks before before I got this from Galway and I, I turned it uh, down and then this this um, offer from from Galway um, came in and yeah I decided I decided to to go for it. And so why was Ireland? Why, why Ireland? The, uh, the most no, uh, but because I wanted I wanted to to try um, working abroad uh, a bit. I always wanted to to be honest, just well, just to Munich to Munich would be fairly abroad, right? Yeah, Cause yeah, they, but the, yeah, cause they are barely German. <laughs> <laughs> they are Bavarian. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, but but I was I was I was waiting for for something something else. As as mentioned, Ireland was was my favorite location, not Germany, but Ireland. Uh, Munich has a much better weather, right? Better, yeah, Overall. definitely, definitely. So uh, they I, are much more wealthy, right? On on a per capita basis. I think so. Yeah, but and uh, still, you chose Ireland. That's interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, because um, I've been to Ireland uh, only once before before uh, my work. Mm -hmm. uh, it was several years ago. Um, I went to, to Dublin to see a um, theater play mm -hmm. uh, in Abbey Theater. Um, yeah, and and 
um, I really like the, the the country. Although although I I haven't seen um, that much, only only Dublin and outskirts. And Ireland is a breathtakingly beautiful country. Really, it's amazing. But whether it's it's how far are the stereotypes true about lots of gingers and being drunk a lot of the time? Oh, I I am only I am only a guest in in the country, so I I. I, I I want. I, um, but you're not. I, di- you're not I, diplomat. You can. You can say whatever <laughs> no, you but, see. Uh, um, uh, someone told me that it's um, according to the statistics. There are no. Um, uh, there are um, not um, uh, more ginger people um, than in other countries. But mm-hmm. I, I see uh, slightly different. So if I if I see people from uh, from my department. In my department, uh, there is no single ginger, but in other departments um, uh, at my company, there are definitely more more gingers than, uh, for example, met in Poland. Mm-hmm. Um, a bank drunk. Um, well, Polish Poland should have more blonde people, right? Yeah. But there are more to the to the northeast type of people yeah, which would be mixed. blonde, yeah, but, brown, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but 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 if it comes to to, to, to skin, we have we have um, uh, quite bright skin. Not 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 dark, yeah, but definitely um, uh, blonde ladies, but of course brown as well. And uh, uh, getting drunk, um, yeah, they 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 like they like to to have fun. They like to be merry with people. Yeah, wow. it's. I mean, yeah. Well, that was the stereotype, right? Uh, well, they, uh, drunk, they even drunk Irish people. They they even have they even have. Um, um, uh, t-shirt with 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 funny funny sentences like um i i i like drink on monday um tuesday wednesday thursday friday and so so on so mm-hmm. no there i i'm to be honest i'm not a party girl but but i know i know they 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 they, they like to 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 get socialized let's say mm, you're really really polite they, they, no, like, really... they like they like to socialize. <laughs> all right, all right. Why not? It's uh, it's not to have to have a pint or two. It's uh... you know what astonished me because I uh, I've always think of Polish people being really really sort of uh, being close to Lithuanian people. Really? Right. Well, because they shared some history together. Right. The Polish Lithuanian kingdom was probably more than hundred years, I guess. Mm. Right. So some form of Mindaugas was in in the mix. But um, I was uh, was wondering that Polish people are more, I guess, um, happy than Lithuanians. Really? Because I think the Lithuanians have one of the uh, worst statistics when it comes to either alcoholism or suicide. I'm not sure, but <laughs> either one of them wouldn't be wouldn't be good. Either alcoholism or suicide was, I think was one of the biggest. The, 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 the and the Lithuania, I'm not, I'm not really Lithuania. sure. Okay. Yeah, why? Okay. I, I believe, I believe more Hungarians. So Hungarians are more um, likely to 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 uh, commit suicide. That's what I've heard. Really? They are, they are, they are the most, the most pessimist in in, in Europe. Really. Really. Know. Yeah. Hungary. Yeah, Hungary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been, I've been to Hungary more than ten times, and uh, yeah, I. Uh, um, Let's just Google who has the most suicide. Because either that or it was alcoholism. In, uh, and not Finland, if it, if it comes to alcohol, Finnish people. Uh, Top countries. It will be Japan. Japan should be there, yeah. Mm. So, so where's the... Latvia? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, number nine, Latvia. Oh, number ten, Belarus. No, when was this article okay. ro- written? So. <clears throat> the end oh it's from 2014 well okay that's a little bit old so Belarus, Latvia. But it's, all right Sri Lanka Japan okay. Hungary Slovenia, Slovenia. Kazakhstan oh, Guyana okay. South Korea Lithuania number one yeah hmm. and now let's see maybe there's a newer one 2015 oh Look at that, 2015, Poland, 25. Oh, shit. Yeah, Ukraine, 24. Huh. I don't know what even what that country is, Comoros. Oh, Comoros, okay, they, they, they are uh, Iceland between Africa and Madagascar. And how do you know that? What? How do you know that? 
Oh, I remember. That's a little bit interesting. Was it just random, or do you know all the islands mm. in the South Pacific or somewhere? Like no, I, I don't. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know um, about all all Iceland in the world. All right, but this one this one is what? from 2018. Okay. So Lesotho is number ten. Lesotho. Latvia. Look at that. I didn't know that. All right, eight Ukraine, seven Kazakhstan, six Suriname. Where is Suriname? Five. So where's that? I'm not sure. Suriname and in South America, if you have Brazil. And there are three um, Damn, you tiny, you have tiny, tiny country: Gu French Guiana, Guiana, and Suriname. Uh, That's impressive. Next to All right, number five: Belarus, Guiana. four: South Korea, three: Guiana, Guiana. two: Russia. Oh, yeah, oh. seems reasonable. And one: Lithuania. Jesus, I didn't know. Yeah, and see, Poland, Poland, nowhere near, nowhere near. Mm -hmm. But even though I think many Polish families have relatives in Lithuania, that's what I think. That's what I think. Uh, yeah, I know. After after um, Second World War, some some uh, some lands have been um, became Ukrainian and Lithuanian as well. Land that used to be used to be po uh, Polish before, but the same with with Polish and German. So we we got some some German lands um, in the north, like Dansk, Szczecin. I, yeah, I guess so. So the the borders moved a bit. Yeah, that might be the case. Mm. So anyway, what what is your uh, what are your plans for for you being in Ireland? Is, it, is it temporary or are you actually looking for to to staying? I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I don't I don't ask myself this question, and I'm 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 really glad that that we live in such times that I do not have to ask this question to myself. Will Brexit change anything for Ireland? Oh uh, well, um, I've read several articles and. Uh, um, the fact that Ireland is going to be the most victim of Brexit um, is it? in the Euro yes, My. this is this is this is this is uh, obvious. Let's say uh, be because they have uh, very uh, they are linked in uh, so many different ways um, with um, with Great Britain. Uh, of course, they um, they have been occupied for for many many years. So so uh, Great Britain is. Um, is um occupier of 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 Ireland, but but then they uh, Wait, so they took. The UK was basically Great Britain plus Northern Ireland, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so, still th so that part is going from outside to outside outside of Europe. European Union, but mm -hmm. the main Ireland part is okay. still staying. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. They so why would they really because, be bothered? Because 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 of the history, because because they are they are really mm -hmm. very closely tied. To, to 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 Great Britain really mm. um, um, because of the history because of the, of um, of the um, do Irish people like British people right now they do not have any any issues with them to be honest because it was surprising that the Scots didn't really vote f for leaving right in mm. the referendum yeah yeah but no no they uh, uh, some of my friends are supporting for example uh, uh, British uh, football teams because because uh, um, Irish are not not that good so um, I know I know people um, Irish people who, who who are a huge who are a huge fans of, of Liverpool or Manchester yeah. so they, they do not have any any issues with that but but the problem is that Perhaps Brexit is opening something that has been has been closed with with so much effort. I mean the conflict in Northern Ireland. Um, Do they have any conflict still? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Truly for what? Yeah, yeah. For in what? 70s, 70s, 80s, there there are well, yeah, they, uh, they, they, have, Ira. they have some waves of terrorism. Yeah, but nowadays, yeah, yeah. nowadays, everybody, no, no, it, it, everybody's it, on their smartphone and don't, don't, doesn't no, really bother, finished, right? Uh, so it finished in 1998, I believe. It was Great Friday um, Agreement, um, signed by huge, huge effort. It was after after bombing in Oma, and Oma is a is a um, small town in Northern Ireland, uh, in the county Tyrone, and in ninety. You have to tell me why. Why do you remember so much of geography? Geography. I, I know. I, I, I like geography uh, while being uh, at school. I even wanted to, to, to study geography, but, uh, but once I um, I found out that I need to to pass exam from mat math, I gave up. From what? From math. Why? Why has that any relation? Uh, I believe because of the statistics. So um, there, there are. Um, um, so geography is not only about maps, but also about statistics. So so. Uh, 
at that well, time someone at, else really, might be yeah, but otherwise at, at that time i um, i was about to 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 to, to study um math was um, was required and wh- for, what about now is it still know. required i don't know maybe i don't know to be honest because it seems to me that uh, it's not really marketing or, of software that's your passion it might be more geography yeah at least that's what, what my impression is so far because you really when you when you describe yeah it's it's there and that's no you know no it some, seems sometimes, so, sometimes, so, some some details so precise. just stick stick to you it it depends what what are your interests you know for example so what are your interests then when you come well um this? culture for example cultural literature um uh, film i was uh, i i was i was a geek of of, of of movies um i was i was very keen i i i still am uh, very keen of of films i studied pop, polish literature uh, but uh, the, spe- uh, the, speci- the specialization mm-hmm. i took it was about film art and my um, master of art diploma was about film a hungarian film uh, to be honest and i even I you was studied in poland, poland about hungarian film uh, yeah so my um I studied. I studied in Poland in Toruń, Nikola uh, Nikolaus Kopernikus University. I studied Polish literature, mm. but uh, the specialization was was film art, and I um, I took um, a Hungarian movie for my Master of Arts mm-hmm. diploma. All right. It was yeah. All right. So, so you chose so, film. Yeah, and then and, and then. Literature? After after study, I I organize and co-organize various film events uh, in Poland and also in Germany. So I, I was I was very keen on on, on film and but I I took a several several um, internships um, um, at the film festivals and then but but then I realized that it's uh, not a real job. So I. Did well, it is right. It yeah, is. it is. But but if you especially if, nowadays when you look at a, the possibilities of media. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, if you if you look at the at the film events, film festivals, still they they uh, they have a lot of a lot of volunteers and only few people, really few people who uh, who are dealing with it um, in a professional way and they um, get paid. To be honest, because. Yeah, only only really huge festivals like Berlinale, um, Cannes, or, or or Venice. How do they get paid? Well, they are. Um, uh, I think they are they are contractors. To be honest, I am I'm not that deep right now in, and I never been um, that deep. How how you can be really um, a contractor of a film festival? Because uh, all of my work I I did for for various film festivals uh, was uh, Pro Publico Bono. Was mm-hmm. uh, was um, yeah, on a um, volunteer basis. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I, I decided. Okay, um, I need to I need to um, give up uh, the culture right now because I, I really need a, a real job job that I I I'm I paid for. Ah, oh, that, that I, I know, rationalism but, getting the best of you. Uh, no, but I'm, I it it wasn't it wasn't a, a huge sacrifice because, yeah. Well, it was it was it was good to to, to 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 start doing something something real let's say are you still related to any of those creative endeavors let's say either organizing or maybe even producing um some? no um no i uh, i never was a producer i i uh, i used to work on few film sets uh, mm-hmm. um as a as a continuity and then what, what do you mean as a continuity? continuity oh it's a it's a if you let's let's describe this way um if you see the film in a chrono, chronological order you yeah. see you see the scenes and and so on but the film is, is shot in a completely different order so for example the scene uh, the scene at the very end of the film that I get it. Yep. Uh, has been shot at the very beginning so yep. in the second uh, shooting day mm-hmm. for example and then then um this um, this role is held mostly by ladies. I don't know why, but there are a few few men who um, uh, who are doing it. Uh, so continuity need to pay attention 
to to all the costumes, to all the details. For example, okay, right now this uh, we are shooting uh, today this scene, uh, but this scene um, is going to be uh, to be put. Um, it, the number of this scene is, for example, seventy six, and we are shooting on the second um, on the second day. So yeah. I, I need to remember. I need to check in the screenplay how um, how the, um, the 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 main character is. Uh, what 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 he or she is wearing, for example. All right, I okay, I seven, in, because between between the scene um, first and uh, seventy six, a lot of a lot, a lot of things are happening. Hmm. So so perhaps uh, uh, he got injured in the in the meantime in the scene uh, um, number thirty five, and hmm. the scene number thirty five is going to be shot uh, in two weeks. So so everything need needs to to match. I get be, it. Because then, then editing is coming, and then, then, okay, um, the the main character is wearing a ring, and the ring um, has been given him uh, in sen, uh, scene uh, thirty five. So you need to remember that if you if you're shooting the scene seventy six, he um, should have already the ring, something like that. They, they are they are really tiny details, and and um, yeah. Is it, is it always the case that it is already mapped out which will be the scene? Yeah, because I would imagine if a, if a let's say a director mm-hmm. wants to be super creative, why wouldn't he just shoot I don't know let's say ten different scenes mm-hmm. and then afterwards just decide which one f- fits best in the storyline? Yeah, but but um, you know um, the the storyline, the plot, the, the main plot uh, needs to be to be um, to be somehow um, in line with. With the main, I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I get. Be... I get that the main outline for the plot is already there. Yeah, but but still, I mean, the scenes provide you with lots of different possibilities. Yeah, I right? think uh, a lot of imagination and a lot of a lot of. Um, uh, I know what, what you mean, but but at the same time, um, it should be con- consistent in in some way. If 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 the director if the director um, uh, decides, okay, let's go, let's and do it, do it. Completely, completely chaotic. Then, then uh, he's shooting. He's shooting an experimental mm-hmm. film. If, if, you know, if if you cannot recognize um, the main character at the end of the film, and you, oh my goodness, what what happened to him? It, uh, nothing matches. You know, uh, it's, I I'm don't know just, what, what. I'm just asking because sometimes when I look at a film, mm-hmm. it seems like the scenes are actually just mashed together in the sense that. You somehow, let's say, you expected from the previous 30 scenes Mm -hmm. that till the end of the movie, let's say, event A, B or C will happen, Mm -hmm. right? Just because it seemed like the, it was already set up for that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, no, the the end of the film didn't show any of those three. It was totally, it seemed like random, right? Which Mm -hmm. see, which left you with a feeling, oh, they left something out. Or they just intentionally deleted mm-hmm. it because uh, they might had had it, but they just afterwards when and the final editing didn't want it there perhaps or something yeah. like that. So it seems like sometimes that yes, even though you get where the end, the middle, and the end part is, you you somehow see sometimes the scenes that you wouldn't have have expected, right? And but right now you are referring to the to the storyline to the plot and that what what continuity um, is doing is is more that I, she I, or he I get it yeah yeah the continuity uh, part co- is just paying consistent. attention to the details exactly exactly and now now we are in this chronological state mm-hmm. so either way we need to provide this 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 because the real requirements are just for yes as you said the rings yeah. maybe maybe at the start of the movie the main character didn't have a tattoo. But so, in, in the middle of it, exactly, you got one to two. Exactly, and so, yeah, exactly, I exactly. Get it. Per- perhaps, perhaps you, you you've noticed in in some some movies that okay, um, um, there are conversation between two characters and uh, one of them is drinking water and then um, uh, the glass is full with water and then uh, the character is drinking and drinking but but at the end of the scene you see you see still still that the the glass is is full but 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 the character uh, drank a lot of. Um, mm. in, in the meantime, so you know this is this is uh, okay. the, the mistake yeah. I'm, I'm I'm talking about. But but if it comes to to the storyline, there are uh, several there are 
this, this is never ending story. Uh, uh, several solutions uh, that can be put uh, put in the film, and that the film can be can be can be set this way. Uh, perhaps you remember the the film of. Um, uh, oh my goodness! I forgot the, the uh, shame on me. I forgot the name of the of the director. Um, oh, I can just describe the title. It. The title is Memento. Memento. You know that Memento. Isn't isn't the word used most of the time to remind people of their death? <laughs> Memento, Memento Mori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, the the film is uh, the, the 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 plot is was was revolu revolutionary uh, at the time the film has been uh, shot several years ago and uh, the storyline is that began from uh, but be began from the end and end at the beginning so there have been several movies like that mm -hmm. right uh, was that the perhaps, first perhaps one? this this the, this is not the only one but perhaps it was the, the first one that that put put the plot this way um yeah didn't have didn't uh, pulp fiction have something already yeah, at pulp the fiction, start? Pulp, uh, yeah pulp fiction had um some um uh, i forgot the uh, the word even in polish and they have uh, and there have been some i think assassination it, movies or something like that that they started also at they, the end not, and then, uh, they have <coughs> they they are playing with uh, um uh, with the convention of 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 film um uh, in pulp fiction as well as i remember i'm not a huge fan of pulp fiction um surprisingly uh but the uh one of the characters uh is dead and then um all of a sudden is still alive mm. so this was and also in uh, michael haneke um funny games i'm not uh, sure of that uh, funny games what is it about oh what is it about Funny game. It's um, about about a family uh, that um, uh, would like to get relaxed, uh, but um, they are attacked by by two young, very violent guys, mm -hmm. and um, a really a deadly game starts. And yeah, they are fighting for life. Is it a it, horror, it, horror movie? So, sorry. Is it a horror movie? It's not the horror, but it's almost horror. It's a it's a it's a thriller. Um, oh. Horror, not not the horror because there are no uh, no uh, no ghost no uh, no paranormal activities, mm -hmm. um, but it's a it's a thriller it's a thriller and there are some there are some uh, moments in the film that that you know that is film mm -hmm. that it, it's it's a movie it it has been set set up mm -hmm. it's it's amazing what what he what he did and uh, but it's it's extremely terrified. It's extremely uh, you're extremely terrified watching this. It's it's, it's, it's mm, maximum terrifying. Really, it's it's a one of of, of, of the best movies. Um, I don't know from twentieth century. I don't remember what it had its premiere. How how is it possible to actually evaluate objectively movies? Because I was all, I was thinking, well, what do you, let's say if a movie gets an Oscar, mm -hmm. what does it say about its quality? Does it say anything about? I don't quality? think so. I don't think so because um, um, right now um, uh, American uh, Film Academy, the, the academy that, that mm -hmm. is giving Oscars, it's you know um, a lot of a lot of people think okay, what what are the criteria for an Oscar? And then um, the criteria isn't errant that that a film is good or bad. It's only it's it's a huge huge um, commercial machine right now. Is it? Uh, a commercial one? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, so um, right now, um, one of the Polish movies, uh, Cold War, has been uh, nominated in three categories. Uh, in the, the name is Cold War. Cold War. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm I'm guessing it's about the middle of the twentieth century then. Uh, no, it's uh, it's such a yeah, euphemism. It's a fifties, fifties, I believe fifties, and it's about about two people. It's a love story. Hmm. Uh, shame on me, I haven't watched uh, the film uh, so far. Why? Why do you see shame on you? You know how many? Because it's a it's a very famous Polish. Film. You know how many uh, Latvian movies I haven't watched? Because <laughs> uh, I don't know how it is in Poland, but most of the films that are being made in Latvia they are funded by public entities. Most, mm. most of the, I think, most in relation to the Ministry for Culture. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because otherwise they are not really profitable endeavors. Oh. 
Okay. Our our guess. So the private private sector is not interested in fin financing uh, Latvian movies. How I don't think so. I don't think so. It might be the case that every once in a while there might be at least some short movie, perhaps I don't know. But all those long format movies, mm. yeah, pu public funding, basically. So uh, Poland is is producing a lot of a lot of features um, and. Uh, and pub, uh, public money um, wouldn't be enough. Mm. So, no, public money wouldn't be enough. Although, so who's although funding? We have, uh, well, uh, some 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 other um, uh, private ent uh, entities. By selling drugs, I, I suppose. <laughs> oh, no, um, so private private television, private companies. Um, yeah, we have we have film association, uh, Polish film association, uh, but but the problem is that that they are yeah too short money so it's um there, there is only one one source of of funding uh, funding um, a film I, I i said uh shame on me because not because it's a polish film uh i haven't watched a lot of a lot of uh, polish movies some mm -hmm. of them um, they are really really bad they're romantic comedies or something like that uh but Roma this one romantic comedies are quite good for tv right yeah, so they're prime time. family friendly. Yeah, yeah, and, something like that. Yeah. But but you know, uh, um, a film uh, uh, why uh, why watching, you, you don't have to to think. It's it's not a good film for me. Oh, well, you can uh, at least appreciate the acting. Yeah, part. if 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 the the, the film is, is quite quite nicely uh, made, why not? Why not? It's uh, you. It, it hasn't be always Bergman movie. You know, it's. So what would you say is your? Do you have any overall, uh, let's say, favorite movie? Um, or at least in the past years. A lot, a lot of movies. A lot of mo movies I, I I I watched in the past uh, are among my favorite, like like The Silent of the Lambs, The Dangerous Liaisons, um, Cargo Two Hundred. Do you know that this is a Russian film? Out of those three, I just know The Silence of the Lambs. Okay, yeah. this but but I mean yeah. I, I didn't really pursue to watch it. I just remember it was some, at one point in time it was just on on the German uh, channel mm -hmm. RTL. So, okay. I, so I just okay. watched it. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't really. I was uh, I don't know probably twelve or thirteen at that time. So I I didn't really know much about uh, Hannibal Lecter or whatever. Okay. It's, uh, it just was on. So you are not cinemaniac. So. Well, I do. I do watch a lot of movies for us, at least in the past years. But I do it mostly to sort of enhance my viewpoint on uh, on the creative arts in mm -hmm. general. I would say because I think what will uh, happen in the, in the future, people will continue and expand their use of digital content. I mean, people are spending more time on the internet than probably anywhere else. And uh, people won't stop looking at other people, right? So the the creative arts in general. But it's happening right now. You you see if you if you. Enter. Well, think yeah. Well, we'll think about it this way. Now we still have um, commercially produced uh, feature films, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But it seems to me that with um, services like, for instance, Netflix, the creativity will get much more enhanced because you can see different things on Netflix. That wouldn't be viable for a traditional movie cinema uh, production. It would it 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 wouldn't get uh, green lighted, right? But since it's on Netflix, since it's uh, video on demand, because of the topics that they they are talking about, not just the topics, but also the plot, right? Because usually, let's say when you when you talk about some uh, thrillers or whatever, you kind of already have the churned out storyline right it's just it's just yeah there are different actors there are different scenarios but still you kind of see the end already far ahead how it will play out at the end the hero gets the girl saves the day and credits roll right but when when you look at the netflix original film that is being produced by netflix mm -hmm. you don't really know what to expect you know um, netflix, most of the time yeah but it's this switch happened a uh, few few years ago because before um, uh, television was let's say uglier sister of 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 of, of, of um, cinematography of of, uh, of movies and right now it's uh, it's 
almost you, you know uh, films are pro um, right now um, as, as you mentioned feature films good really uh, really good uh, feature films are produced by um, uh, by television companies like like Netflix uh, um, uh, uh, feature films are distributed by by them for example Roma I don't know if you've heard uh, about it this is this is the most um, the Bigger competition of a competitor of of um, Polish um, Cold War, a Mexican film um, shot by Alfonso Cuaron. Uh, this film uh, is mostly going to 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 win, uh, if not all of them, but most uh, most of Oscars this uh, this year. And it has been distributed by ne by Netflix, really artistic movie. Mm. And uh, yeah, this this switch. Um, um happened a few years ago that television became a medium that um started covering more and more serious topics you know do you mean do you mean more the internet because i'm not sure whether or not netflix would call itself a tv company i don't really think that they are anything related to tv they're just sort of it's weird, right? Because in a sense, they do create TV series, mm -hmm. right? But they have never shown anything on TV. It's just that they are an internet streaming company that provides you with their with their produced content. But it's all right? the, that TV moved to to internet. Uh, I still I'm still per perceiving as uh, Netflix as a, as, a, as a television company. Really? Although although I do not have uh, I do not have um, TV at home. It's still for me uh, uh, television. Doesn't doesn't TV have a specific format though? I mean, when you talk about TV uh, and TV companies, usually they have a sort of a rigid structure, a rigid format. And not just for getting the, I don't know, licenses and permits and whatever they have to have in their specific jurisdiction, but also for the way how they distribute the content. Because mm. as far as I know, you wouldn't be able to show explicit nudity on TV day, daytime uh, shows, right? Mm. Whereas on an internet uh, stream service, basically everything could go. I think I think they don't I, have any rules. I know for what them, you mean. I know sense. what you mean. But I still um, television has uh, has changed, and um, I don't know um, Latvian first channel. Uh, sorry, I don't know how it's called, but or Polish. Uh, oh, well, worldly enough, it is called Latvian first channel. First channel, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Polish, the, the the same. It's it's still and Netflix is, is also television or. Uh, Hulu, is a television company, but they do not. They do not. Stream. No, no. Hulu is a streaming company, streaming. but but they are owned by a television channel. I think they are owned by Disney or uh, ABC. Maybe. Or ABC was owned by Disney or something like that. Yeah, but maybe. Yeah, some big but conglomerate. Still, for for me, okay, they are they are, all of them are te let's say television, but. It's a completely different form of television. I guess. I guess the. But, but better, a, I, I guess. I guess the better use for all of them would be just entertainment company or oh yeah, or something right, no, yeah. the media entertainment. Yeah. 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 But of course, television. If you if you um, if you refer to the first channel of Latvian or Polish uh, television, is still okay. Mm. It's not only feature films, but also short films, on, also um, cartoon for 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 kids, and also news. Polish and, cartoons. Uh, I don't know Polish. No? I don't know. I don't know. Some some cartoons for kids. All right. Um, and um, if it comes to Netflix, and Netflix, they're uh, only films, I believe. No, they have a lot. They really have a lot. It's it's sort of strange that they have established themselves because Netflix, I guess, started with when they rented out DVDs. Uh, films, film series, and short movies. I believe they they do not have. S they have a kids section kids even kids section. Okay. and uh, when you go to the kids section mm -hmm. it provides you with i don't know with the pepe the, the pig or something like that and okay. a lot of them but just specific what, content oh, okay, for them. yeah uh, but that what um, i'm trying to say they do not have um, um strict uh, schedule uh, except for for film content Regardless of yeah, if, if, it, if the feature yeah. or short or cartoon, they yeah. have only film or series, even TV series, right? So they do not have news. They do not have uh, I don't know if they have advert, uh, uh, advertising. There. Perhaps if, if you mm. pay for premium, you do not have to watch advertising. I well, the, their whole business uh, model is based on you paying a subscription mm -hmm. fee, 
there's no advertising nothing yeah, it's just exactly. yeah exactly. a subscription yeah but definitely definitely such, such company like like netflix uh, uh, they started started producing producing some content that 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 it's still not existing in in in, in a in a old style television they are they are much more brave they 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 cover some topics that they are they are not shot in prime time absolutely some because it wouldn't be considered commercially viable right because because they have those strict rigid mm -hmm. uh, confinements when it comes to product for tv or product for traditional cinema but when you have these these alternative channels mm -hmm. like netflix yeah it's it's sometimes sometimes it works really good i mean sometimes when you see some show or uh, movie on uh, Netflix you think wow this is this is a nice production yeah. and sometimes just what were they thinking <laughs> right because you never know but that's that's the weird part of it there's the the mystery behind it right mm -hmm. you have to watch to actually get acquainted with with the whole uh, scene in a sense yeah. and the reason why I think that me looking at lots and lots of movies in that way will help me is that uh, because I think in the uh, let's say foreseeable future most of the content will be uh, co produced and consumed digitally I mean people will still go to cinema for sure people will still will go look at television and stuff like that but uh, or listen to radio but most people will, will tend to go to on the internet mm -hmm. and just choose the content because uh, then you can literally stop pause choose a different option whatever you like right and so i think the the ability to have a sense of the i don't know how to call it uh, but social dynamics in a sense i guess when you when you have inter people interacting with each other right in in different contexts it's i think it's just a great ability to have in everyday life in general and then if you are also on some digital platform mm -hmm. Right, it just allows you to actually produce your content, for instance, with a better. Yeah, but but it it happened. It started. It started a few years ago, and um, yeah, that um, that the content will be tailored to you. It will be on demand, right? So mm -hmm. so um, uh, the old style television. That okay, um, uh, six p.m. Um, cartoon for for kids. Uh, seven uh, prime time news. Uh, 8 p.m. Uh, some movie and prime time. It's, 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 it, right now, it it shouldn't be a really uh, a Bergman movie or, or a movie that that you need to did you, think about. Did you the, did you like, see the Bergman movie? Uh, yeah, Ingmar Bergman. Yeah. I, I didn't understand it. Can you can mm. you explain it to me? Bergman's? Yeah. Oh, well, the, uh, the, uh, he he shot a lot of a lot of movies. What what uh, what movie would we like? What we like to discuss? Persona or no? No, I mean the Birdman movie. What is was it really about? B Birdman or uh, because I said Bergman. Ingmar oh, Bergman. 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 Oh, okay, the, the Swedish I saw, I director. You, sorry, I thought you, I thought you meant Birdman. Birdman, Birdman, the, right? The, I think they they won an Oscar, right? Yeah. Last year. Yeah, uh, was no, it? It was a few years ago. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the time I, I watched it and I uh, literally at the end I was like, what did I just watch? I, I, I didn't understand it at all. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not sure whether or not I have some some issues I have to look into that I didn't get. But it just seemed mm. so... I don't know. I, get, I guess the main star was, was sort of dealing with his issues in the film, but... I still didn't get it at all. Okay. No, but it's good. It's good that 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 you that you. Um, uh, what was the moral of, of the moral. movie? I, I, you know, this is the beauty of of, of art that that um, each of us um, understands in 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 a slightly different way. Someone doesn't understand at all. Someone loves movie. Someone hates movie. Someone. Someone. Okay. Um, I'm somewhere between i i really didn't understand this is my my, my initial feeling but but perhaps i'm going i'm going to see it for for a second time um because the way i evaluate movies at least till till now is sort of simple i, I view first mm -hmm. of for, first and foremost whether or not i understand the scenario what so what are the main characters what are what are their relations to each other mm -hmm. and what is the whole plot right then afterwards i can just yeah appreciate if it's really okay. intense acting or or great scenery or whatever mm -hmm. 
but when it comes to the Birdman movie, yes, I understood the relations between the people, mm -hmm. sort of, because it's fairly obvious who liked whom uh, okay. and stuff like that, right? But if I would have to tell you, well, the overall moral of the story is, I don't know, I don't know. If, for instance, the the I think the best um, the best example of uh, easy to understand, uh, quite in depth and deep thought is uh, Fight Club, mm -hmm. for instance. The reason be behind it is simple, right? Because sort of you when you look at it on the surface, it's sort of a destructive, uh, ego maniacal thing. But then again, it's really a critique of society or for consumerism mm -hmm. or whatever, right? But it's simple. You can you can differentiate those things. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of films are not that simple, and uh, for me, um, film art or any other um, kind of art is not about. But, but but of course, it's up to you if you if you're looking for for some answers. It's it's okay. Um, but, but would you but would you respect if let's say, one hundred people say, well, this movie was really bad mm -hmm. and then uh, one person comes well i enjoyed it mm -hmm. would you really think that yeah of, of course that means that the uh, movie has some benefits or not, some good I, aspects i do not uh i do not judge any any artifact by really? by some by uh someone else's opinion Why? It, it's 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 uh, the most crucial for me is if i like it or not I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I. I. I really. Uh, it, I do not care if hundred people say, "Okay, it's a piece of shit." Sorry for my French. And and uh, one person, okay, I rather enjoy it. Mm. it the the most crucial for me, I, I like it or not. For for example, Blair Witch Project. Perhaps you you know the um, uh, the film. Blair Witch. Uh, Blair Witch Project. Yes. Yeah, so the, this well, horror movie. But but the only reason why it was so successful was because people thought it was real. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, uh, and, I, I, and I thought but, I but remember for, us, uh, for me, it, it's uh, a lot of people. A lot of people uh, didn't like the uh, the film, and the, the film got really, really bad critics. So, um, and and for me, it's one of the uh, best horror ever, really. And I, uh, some some people perhaps uh, would be ashamed to to convince. Okay, but did I like you this get movie. the impression because you also thought about no, it being no, real? absolutely not, no, no, because because that, that was because that was the real uh, twist to it. Right? Yeah. Because people at one point in time thought, oh man, this really happened. Uh, oh. Based on true story. No, no, right? it, 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 um, it wasn't, um, it wasn't uh, important to me at all. It was great marketing though. Absolutely. This was, uh, this was um, a film uh, that uh, has been advertised, um, I, I believe for, for the very first time in, in film history. Um, you know when uh, when um, uh, the campaign for the film started one year before its premiere one mm. year on the internet so it was it was a masterpiece but it was somewhere around 96 or 97 right Some, I, somewhere I, I in need, the 90s I need to check I need to I check mean, I don't remember how many people did use the internet back then not too many oh. I just remember seeing of course, not that seeing many. I, I just I remember seeing the advertisements on um, the German TV channels mm. right and the, oh wow a real life Footage, uh, right? Yeah. Wow. No, but but I didn't I didn't judge the the, the, the film because it, I, I thought it was it was based on true story or not. Mm. No, I, I I just appreciate the, how 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 the film told the story. Well, it, it really, was a bit con unconventional. I yeah, guess that's what yeah. you mean, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, not not still camera, but but camera moving all the time, and uh, but uh, yeah, but but for me it it's one of the best horror ever because for me the most um scary part is um that if something is is not showed at, it cannot be seen at first glance for example it's nothing has been had been shown to be honest in this mm -hmm. in this film and, and it, it, it it really it built this this atmosphere in a really um a masterpiece way to be honest so it was it was great would it uh, would it uh, make and a difference if you had seen the film twice or maybe you watched it again a couple of years ago, uh, uh, later uh maybe yeah because you, you know those uh, times when sometimes something makes a big impression absolutely and the, the feeling lasts but then I you know. watch it again and then well you what? know, you know the, I didn't the, catch that. the way how how you rate uh, not only film but any of the um, artifacts is 
the time and 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 your mood mm-hmm. so for example the same film watched uh watch if if you were relaxed and in a good mood is completely different film when 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 you're when while you're watching the film and you're tired and 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 and, and uh, not in um, in a good mood so so it's completely it's uh, it's it's so based on 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 yourself and on 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 your temper on your on on, on your mood and uh, sometimes sometimes um uh i just i just uh, decided that i i'm not going to to watch this film for 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 the second time or third mm-hmm. time because 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 i like it so much that and i'm afraid that the film wouldn't wouldn't impress me that much as um uh, for the first time so yeah it's it's uh, art is um so would it's you, very interesting so would you say that you have some let's say favorite movies of the past yeah. i don't know how many years yeah i mean the leverage project would be one uh but one perhaps not not in the first place but one of them uh but at the same time i know very well that if i watch the silent of the lamps now i would i would understand the film in a perhaps not in a completely different way but in a slightly different way so i uh, perhaps i would catch some 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 things that i didn't catch when i was i don't know 18 when i watched it for the very first time so it's yeah uh, you mean some art. subtleties Mm? You so, mean some subtleties in the film? Uh, some nuances. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, definitely because because you mm. you judge you judge um, not only films but artifacts based on on that who you are or based on your experience uh, uh, based on your background. De- definitely. So um, uh, film uh, the same film watched by a fifteen years old teenager. Uh, without any any um, any background, and the same film uh, watched by a um, 57 um, old lady, uh, well educated, whatever. It it they will be they will be completely different films, be- because you are filter by by your by your own experience, would, by your own background. Would you say that there's <clears throat> there's a certain uh, level of sophistication that is needed to actually watch film no i'm i'm very far away uh, of this a lot of people a lot of people think that that you need to be well educated to see some so for example in my bergman uh, movies and i'm very very far away uh, uh, from it or federico fellini no uh, the good art is is um um, um can be not only watched but can be understood by by anyone and it's up absolutely up to you what you take away from it and uh perhaps some some people would like would like to 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 be um to be perceived as a as a sophisticated people or whatever i i i remember when i uh when i Told, uh, when I told my friend that that I uh, I really like opera, I'm not I'm not opera expert. I just like like opera. I I like I like the atmosphere. I like the voices. I like uh, really the, the entourage and uh, and uh, some some of them. Oh my goodness, you are so sophisticated. No, I'm not. It's it's not about sophistication. You know, everyone can go to opera and and watch it. And it's absolutely up to you if you if you buy. It it or or not mm. and i think i think um no education is needed for watching opera although although it's 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 said that it's okay it's a high class art it's, it's i not. don't know about high, high class art but it just seems that opera well to me at least opera was sort of invented at a time where there was no real alternative for entertainment in a mm. sense right it was a pompous experience Nowadays, I mean, you have so many options to choose from yeah. when you when you talk about entertainment, right? I mean, I I don't know how opera or even even theater still exists today. I I really don't understand because it it's it's sort of I guess the same attitude when uh, when TV first came out that they thought it will kill radio, mm, right? Yeah. When when in reality it just coexists, but still. Still, because 
I don't know many young people who do go to the opera, if you, if you know what I mean. I still see people who, uh, well, they sort of have, um, if you would ask me, those people who I know who, who go to the opera mm -hmm. or to the theater regularly, I would say they have, as, as far as I can see, they have still the sort of a upbringing or classical classical attitude towards things and one of them being the art of let's say singing mm -hmm. right which which sort of i don't know why but sort of lasts uh, more or the, or the impression lasts more when it is on stage than in a concert hall for instance yeah. or i don't know why right because in a sense I don't see any difference between an opera singer mm -hmm. singing whatever how long they sing their 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 pieces but still I don't see a, a big difference between them and a pop star mm -hmm. it's just that and I think that's the main issue is that if opera or the songs that they are singing would be as popular as the pop songs then those people who are now going to the opera wouldn't really like opera that much because it seems to me there there has a there has to be some form of distinction, right? Because no, no, no. I mean, yeah, these 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 are the pop songs. This is this is music. Uh, some, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's just some my people impression. like make this because uh, you know because you know hipsters, right? Yeah, I, I, mean, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And, that's, you and mean. that's the principle of having uh, something not really popular. I know, I know oh. what you mean. Some people, some people build their own ego based on, on okay, uh, based on this distinguishing, uh, distinguishing uh, between okay. Uh, but I think it's it's very artificial, you know. It's between mass culture and this high culture, and for me, completely artificial. And uh, this uh, this line doesn't exist, to be honest. And if if some people would like to perceive themselves as a more sophisticated uh, because they go to opera oh, no. or go to the theater. I'm not. I'm not saying that they feel think of themselves more high brow or anything. Mm. It's just that there. There's that. I'm sure of that. I mean, I'm, I've encountered many, many people who, even though they don't tell you that, but in some some situations you can see the real intentions for people, and it's just there is um, a psychological profile for some. That is really more attuned to things being a at least a little bit different that they don't want to go with the masses everywhere right it's just that yeah well i have my own personality right it's just a, a little bit of distance a little bit of no 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 i'm i'm not with the sheeple right and and so i think well, i'm not i'm not saying that's only the the per people who go to opera for instance i'm just saying that it might be the case that these types of scenarios where it's not the masses that go there but mm. but only a certain kind of uh, people that at least some of them have this type of uh, I know, thinking I know or at least uh, at from. least intentions right because yeah. because there is really a benefit of feeling not not necessarily different but still feeling that you are not one of the many naive uh, people right yeah i know i know what at least social from. socially critical thinking would be like that right yes. saying saying yes most of most of the mass is sort of a not thinking group right and so if you don't want to be perceived as such you should be a little bit but it's funny it's from, funny because because right now right now um uh, this um, high culture is opera, um, theater, and classical music. And classical music, at the time that uh, when it has been written, uh, was for pop. for pure for uh, it was pop. It was for pure and pleasure. It and was for pure entertainment. It's and funny. That's, yeah, yeah and that's and that's invented. the thing I was talking about because at the time the thing was invented, it was basically the only thing available, exactly. right? And so the technological advances should have actually made the social advances as well meaning that oh yeah of course it used to be a time when we only made sounds with the drums and our voices and then we moved on but in a sense still people like to enjoy just uh, let's say so just uh, drums and uh, voices right but it's still around but if you if you, if you, if you, if you hear the, the 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 most popular operas like um, the magic flute 
It's almost almost pop. The 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 the, the most you beloved the arias arias are, yeah exactly exactly. Well, I mean most most memorable uh, song pieces are melodic. That's that's yeah. I guess that's the physiological behavioral but nature they, of, of yeah, things. Yeah, but only on the best uh, could uh, write it like Mozart. Or you see the, the funny th- you, you see the funny thing is probably if Mozart would be living in this day and age. He would even he probably wouldn't have even thought of doing the music the way he did, right? Yeah. He would probably put some nice bass around it and and have some reverb and whatever. But yeah. Yeah. Then he just operated with the things he got, sort of. Exactly. I'm I'm not sure whether or not there have been any composers who made pieces without the ability to play them in to their full extent. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe in the 17th century there might be some some composer who thought yeah yeah the, this is great this is great and this is orchestral yes yes but I I just need this sound no no one can make this sound but ah, I'll just write it down maybe some sometime in the future somebody could make oh, this sound such an inventor oh, okay maybe. well because because think about it this way if you had if you didn't had the instrument but you at least had had the option of them recording their voices. They could have actually probably le- left you some uh, audio note. I, w- mm-hmm. I would like to some instrument who does this, right, right, and then afterwards somebody could actually make that happen technically. Because mm. I'm not sure how much of the more, how much more, most of the composers were able to actually manufacture instruments. I, th- I guess um, what was the most famous violinist Stradivari? Stradivarius. Was it Stradivari? Uh, you know the violinist, uh, the, right? Who yeah, made yeah, famous maybe. violins. But I guess he also played. But Bach, which which orgel? Did he the, make them? Yeah, uh, I think he uh, he enhanced them. You know. Really? Yeah. All right. I guess it's not really uh, the norm, right, for composers to be actually to be able I to. I think that they, they were looking it. for for something that they can reflect that what was in their heads in the I guess we, I guess when you have at least the type of instrument around and you just need a particular tonality then that might be a bit different right because then you can just experiment with uh, I don't know the density of materials or mm. the or the tensions or, or yeah. like anything like that but if you had I mean how much time went by until people invented the piano for instance because probably nobody in the 8th century or in, before in, piano was this carp record well there, there yeah. were definitely some pre-existing yeah. instruments that's for sure but at one point in time was there somebody who actually made that pieces together and had that sa- sounding yeah. that way it does because nobody could actually think of it I guess in the Roman Empire for instance who, who would have thought of that they just had harps yeah. and some string yeah, instruments, some strum- uh, mm. simple string instruments. So, yeah, I, I just think even though they didn't have a piano around, I just think in the probably fifth century, you could have found a Roman composer who would who probably thought of, man, I need a little bit different sounding, but yeah, no, nothing's around and I don't have an option to record it. Maybe in the future they will invent something. Did you have um, uh, musical education or this? Wait. Well, not really. Yeah, I'm, yeah, a, I'm a, um, let's say, I'm more interested in uh, media in general. I just, I just like music or, well, if you ask me education wise, I went to producing courses, but that's mm-hmm. about it, okay. right? It's not really, it's not really much in the broad scheme of things, but I just think, yes, music is one of those things that is almost everlasting. At least if you have the medium to record it, to store it, it's everlasting. And uh, only recently has it been so affordable, you know what I mean? That you actually can make music everywhere mm. you can distribute it almost everywhere yeah. mm. it's 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 almost like a revolution right it's just that we haven't really adapted to it yeah what itunes or spotify because that's okay. those are the, the distribution uh, platforms mm. but most of the music that's being produced 
is still some somewhat around uh, for the big companies the big five or yeah. i don't know how much but it's probably for changing really really fast in the next couple of years simply yeah. because now you can even have some programs and produce music on your phone exactly. because the phones are so powerful uh, computing wise exactly. This Shit. is the same. The same with films. You do not have. You do not have really heavy thirty-five millimeter um, film camera. You can just have camera in your in your mobile, and you can you can make a film. You can make a film, and then have you have you seen the film um, Hardcore Henry? No, I haven't seen that, but uh, I uh, I know what the film is about. Yeah, but I haven't seen. Because that was recorded with GoPros, as far as I know. Maybe. maybe. Yes, I, it was, I think it was a Russian director. Mm -hmm. and and it's a, quite an interesting movie i mean for uh i guess it would be called an action movie but yeah it was quite interesting to look at and yeah as far as i understand their budget was so small and so they used just sports cameras <laughs> a lot of sports cameras that's really i mean comparatively it's really really good as, as well as i know there are some uh, film events uh, not only one uh, several film e events that um uh, that invite uh, films uh, made only by 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 mobile cameras really you mean mobile phones uh yeah hmm. yeah, yeah yeah i guess i guess there are still but there are some not not uh, not uh, the depth of quality right you can get so with fun. those big yeah cameras but right now even even the uh, movies that are shot in the movie theaters um, are, are right now a lot of them are, are shot with with digital cameras and not with with panavision or ariflex cameras 35 millimeter film anymore that uh, when I was um, working um, on the film set of few movies, few, only few, uh, I saw th I saw this this Ariflex, a huge, beautiful camera with with real film inside, but but right now they are they are shot with 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 of course um, very advanced, but with digital cameras. And, um, Does it make a difference in general? Well, um, still still um uh, that's what i've heard that there are still differences for example in how how the the, the real film the kodak um uh, reflects blackness pretty the black color so mm -hmm. so the digital cameras are, are still not able to 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 reflect black real black 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 it but it's a nuance perhaps it's a nuance yeah i would really. guess i would guess that that would be it's more it's not that deep yeah, it, I guess that would be more of an issue for the screen than yeah, for the camera. Yeah, and, and, and resolution. I I don't know, but but it's still it's something that is one of the nuances of of of, of the real film. That's probably really uh, a tiny issue then, because yeah. yeah, I would imagine that's just a screen issue, and uh, once the how you can calibrate your your monitor. As once well. once the new type new generation of LED monitors mm. will will get more cheaper and available i guess that's that issue is also out the window because that's one of the things about the new oled screens mm -hmm. they are really really expensive but what they are saying is that for instance black is really black <clears throat> on them simply because the diodes are somehow oh well no they they are saying uh, the reason why black is black on those screens is because once the information is on the screen that uh, in this particular patch there is a black mm -hmm. the diode just um, shuts off which means there's no light emitting mm -hmm. which means it's just purely black mm -hmm. right so that's why the but that's why the the screen enthusiasts like oled mm -hmm. because it allows real colors simply because they are more adaptive to the particular patches of the screen it's just that they are i think four or five times as expensive as the, the regular yeah. LED screens. Yeah. But do you remember the previous technology, plasma? Plasma um, was able to reflect black in a, in a better one, way than LCD. I guess so, yeah. But then it was too, too, too expensive and it wasn't that. I think manufacturer-wise it's, it's, it's become abund uh, abundant for, for to use LED. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards it's just, yeah, what, what are the improvements on that? It just mm -hmm. seems, yeah, like like it's more convenient for for the producers yeah. stuff like that yeah
But anyway, would you say that Polish cinema has a future? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So we have some upside downs, but but right now, uh, right now, uh, for the last few years, uh, Poland produced really good good movies. Um, um, uh, we won an Oscar for best foreign film mm -hmm. two three years ago. The time flies. Uh, Ida. I don't know if you uh, if you watch it. This is the, um, uh, the film has been um, has been made, but by, by the same director uh, who made uh, Cold War. So he's nominated mm -hmm. right now for the best director as well. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's a uh, good times for for Polish cinema. See, that's that's why I'm asking you. Maybe you should have another try uh. in in those. Those I, don't, uh, I don't think so. I'm, I'm so uh, I drifted so far away from from it. Although I, I, I still, it still, I still, it still sounds like your your heart is in there still. I yeah, and and it always be. Um, it always be. A bit, I still um, keep trying to 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 be up to date. Um, a few a few months ago, I I was a volunteer for the Cork Film Festival in Ireland and. Um, a uh, few weeks before that, I was volunteer for Galway Arts Festival. So, so, so still, so still, I'm, I'm somewhere there. So, what is your biggest hobby? To organize things, to produce things, uh, uh, produ to uh, know of things. My biggest hobby. Oh, um, I also like to watch and to listen. Um, yeah, maybe organize, maybe organize. Um, perhaps I'm not ready to, to produce anything. Yet. But when when would you be? Or would are you even maybe, interested? Maybe, but uh, yeah, yeah, I am interested. But but at the same time, I I know my my own limitation, and I would I would um, I would need some some education in this direction, definitely. So, but uh, yeah, being a, a, a culture manager. Um, of a film event, why not? Why not? But at the same time, oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I do not feel that I'm very, very far away because right now, um, cultural management management is 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 very similar that to that what how how the things are managed in a, in a corporations. Really, if you if you look, are at you sure? I'm 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 quite are sure. Are you sure? Because your corporation is <laughs> actually pr producing things for profit, not for uh, art. Uh, right now, art you know art uh, needs to be sold. Uh, you you, you mean you consumed, consumed. But, maybe, but sold as well. You know, well, I'm, are you sure? Because that, I'm sure. that means because that means you would need to put a price tag on it. Oh well, of course. If if you don't money, you you, you cannot you cannot enter the, the movie theater. So um, uh, you asked before um, if what are the criteria for for um, Oscars? So Oscars uh, for the. Uh, Last several years are not are not the sign of, of the quality. To be honest, it's only how much uh, the producers put uh, for advertising. I remember it was several years ago that the English Patient, um, a film by uh, Anthony, made by Anthony Minghella, um, got several Oscar nominations, and um, and the film is so so. I would say, um, but then it. It was said that it, okay, it's independent film, and then it turned out. What 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 does it mean that it, the, this film is independent? Because it turned out that the film uh, cost twenty around roughly twenty million American dollars, and they put even more for for advertising. It was thirty million. So okay, uh, it, um, it has been um, uh, produced and distributed by Miramax, Weinstein Company. So. Well, distribution would be one thing, but would would you say that it it wouldn't even fit the criteria of being called uh, an independent? No, uh, I mean uh, uh, that's what I uh, I'm trying to say that um, the film that uh, for the last several years that um, got the most um, Oscar nomina uh, nominations were not um, the best movies. Uh, they they were uh, films that um, had enough money. To to find way to um, academy members. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's um, it's it's not top secret uh, that. The so why Oscar do people pay attention to the Oscars in general? Oh, because because it's so. Um, uh, 
Because a regular person doesn't really... I mean, the the Spider-Man franchise won't get an Oscar anytime soon, right? But people are still going to the but cinema. But the, uh, the, the Black Panther um, got an Oscar nomination for... The, uh, uh, got several Oscar nominations, among others, for the best movie. That was probably politically, right? Uh, Ideologically. Yeah, I think so. I think Cause, so. Because I don't know why, but it seems to me that the Americans... Uh, so over the top liberal when it comes to all the media all the entertainment things it's just becoming ridiculous because it used to be a time when let's say in the 90s mm -hmm. you still had some some corny jokes uh, totally fine right and some some racial remarks totally fine everything was not too much sensitive right but now it seems to me they just are going over the Monty, top, Monty, over the Monty top. Python? Yes, how, yes, how all an, those. How non -political correct those are British are. people. I don't mm -hmm. think I don't think British people nowadays are too liberal. But I'm not sure. You could be pro probably more knowledgeable about it. Uh, no, I, I don't know. Are they because too right sensitive? Now, right politically now, sensitive? Right nowadays? now we are mixing both both terms. Um, uh, you said uh, liberal and political correct. So because uh, because it seems to me that they are going hand in hand. At really? least in America. Okay. I mean, usually what uh, what liberal means in America would be everybody has the freedom to do what they please and to not be insulted or, okay. or harassed, right? And political correctness is the, the, the obligation for others to respect your emotions and your well-being mm -hmm. or the other, pers or other persons and their well-being, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just the type of things that were used to be called uh, insensitive were really really almost um, aggressive and insulting things mm -hmm. now it's becoming the type of um, scenario where somebody asks for instance if you had a more dark skin and i would ask you but well, where are you from mm -hmm. it might be an insult right which is just total nonsense yeah. i mean it's just a regular conversation and if you address yeah, the, if you address an obvious thing right uh, out of yeah. curiosity yeah. it wouldn't be possibly be considered in a, in a normal setting it wouldn't be possibly considered insulting maybe, maybe. right but if you have those those progressive types of folks over in america they can make anything happen right mm -hmm. and and it's just i think the black panther movie was the best example cuz it definitely wasn't made for art critics it was yeah, made it was made for uh, superhero mm -hmm. fans that's that's yeah, what the movie is about it's just mm -hmm. a comic movie hero that's comic hero i don't want to say that that uh, um, adventure uh, films cannot be cannot be made very good and cannot um, win oscar nominations but uh, i watched i watched uh, the black panther and i really don't think it's a good movie it's it's a very interesting movie it's a it's a regular superhero movie it's a regular superhero movie yes yeah but um yeah but definitely um, but i i don't perceive um, uh, american society as a liberal society it's a very conservative society for me what i mean is basically hollywood no uh, the media centers okay i mean the, when you have journals and tv and uh, entertainment industries as, as in general, you definitely have more left-wing people oh, than right-wing oh, yeah, people. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that with, uh, I think the you know what one of the biggest problems in American culture is that they use too many uh, psychoactive substances. Whether it would will be relating to illicit drugs mm -hmm. or it might be pharmaceutical pre uh, medicines, but they just totally are off the charts with with their use of medications and drugs i mean literally it's it's, it's uh, i remember one one uh, man from who well he was raised in america but he's ba basically a latvian and he told me yes it's, it's totally normal for for let's say a 40 year old or 30 year old to have um, several pills a day for whatever whether it's concentration issues depression issues exactly just nonsense but if you watch um, you American ask you you probably ask uh, an average polish dude 
right? He just no, a couple of beers will be fine. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But if you watch uh, um, an American uh, American TV and you you, you see that uh, um, some pills are so heavily advertised and um, in in Europe such advertising would be banned, would be not possible even. But but they 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 can okay. Uh, several times uh, when I was in the US, I, I've been to uh, a few times, and uh, and I I watched the, the advertising block, and then and there were some some advertising. Okay, you feel unhappy? Just just take a pill, and it was for me shocking. But but it's a completely different society. They are completely different structures. I would say, I I cannot even imagine that I I live uh, there. It's uh, it's a completely different universe for me. It's. Yeah, and it's also really changing for for the better because nowadays everybody has access to information so uh, there are more people thinking twice before but, taking any pills but information is one uh, one thing and another one is even more important is education and education in in the US it's not that liberal education is very very expensive thing in the good education in the US as you know do you mean more expensive than in Europe Mm, definitely, definitely, it's a, it's a private mm. sector. Well, what private. would you say about Poland, for instance? What, so what, Poland, what it's, it's a free. Let's say Poland, in <laughs> Poland is free education. I, I'm free because because you need still to have a lot of money to 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 afford to go to a, a, a university and then because you need to, um, you need um, uh, money for food, you, you need uh, money for accommodation and so on. But what about but, tuition? But there are no tuition at all. Oh really? No, yeah. So it's oh, because because in Latvia most of it most of it it is for oh, okay, you see for pay. No, <laughs> which is which is silly because I remember who who came here. He was speaking about some. Oh, I think yeah. The <clears throat> recently I had a Dutch guy mm -hmm. over here, and so he said that recently they introduced. Uh, tuition fees mm -hmm. in in the Netherlands. I don't know for if for all universities, but for many many universities, yes. right? And it says it's so expensive, and uh, I don't think the reform is good, right? So I asked him, so what are the tuition fees? And mm -hmm. he said basically like two thousand euros per year, mm -hmm. right? Which is a regular fee in Latvia. Mm -hmm. And I told him, well, but you have an Dutch education system, and I have a Latvian education system. There's there's a difference, right? So even though the Dutch might be worth 2,000 euros. Even we have basically mm -hmm. the same level of, of expenses, right, for, for uh, education, which is a little bit silly if you look at us, because Latvia, because I, I told them, yeah, I mean, when you have the rankings for the universities mm -hmm. in the world, we are nowhere close to the 500. <laughs> Well, uh, two Polish university, um, uh, Warsaw University and Jagiellonia Univers University in Krakow, they are, I believe, in in the four hundred um, uh, somewhere uh, four hundred um, something like that. Uh, Might be the case. I, I would imagine it's far away, far away from from the uh, American university and from the university in the UK, from the university in, in Asia. So it's a really remote place. Places. Well, yeah, but you still are in the let's say top five hundred. Oh, jeez. Right? Oh, we, we cannot boast about even that. Mm. I don't know which which uh, uh, our uh, universities was, but uh, outside of the 500. But I, I still think it's... Uh, well, it's an outdated, it's an outdated system. Because uh, you think about it this way. Those people who now manage the universities mm -hmm. are those people who were brought up with typewriters. Right? They didn't really use computers in yeah. their, when they were children. Right, it's just that almost a whole generation has been sort of not really lost, but they de definitely don't use the potential that's there. Mm. Right, and so I think after the, another generation, everything's fine. But I think uh, uh, the same issues. I, I I don't know because because um, I I aborted my 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 PhD, uh, so I don't know how it looks in um, uh, right now in in Polish at Polish universities. But there's still a huge glass ceiling, so um, all um, elderly um, uh, professors are not willing to to take any any, um, any reforms, and and young people um, who are full of enthusiasm, they are just they are just out of the boat um, yeah, it's, 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 it's it's still it's very conservative it's an old man's yeah. game mm. but not for long that's that that's the beauty of it I mean the generational change uh, that's why I think we are in the midst of a revolution 
because because what would be a, a great definition for a revolution that basically changes everyday life in ways nobody had foreseen before right for the better usually at least that's the in intention that's the intention at least right i mean not every revolution goes smoothly but still at the end you would expect the society is better off right are you now, sure it's a revolution and not evolution let's say because revolution is something well, that, what, that happens quite suddenly um well in but, a short time but period. Yeah, yeah but see that's the that's the issue i'm having with uh, the argument about for instance the french revolution nobody really says that at the end of the 18th century all of a sudden the peasants just started started revolting it's not really the case i mean for years there have been problems they have brewing they had brewing the the matters over and over and over and yeah at at one point it's just it was too much some some initial occurrences started mm -hmm. everything and it just got the ball rolling right but it's still a matter of years it's not like yeah. in one particular year all of a sudden yeah. the peasants just r rise up so i don't know what would be the differentiator for revolution and evolution when it comes to time all i know is after a revolution it's supposed to be a different society for the better okay. or the the general well-being right because in the industrial revolution brought us more or less uh, comforts that that society didn't even know could be achieved mm -hmm. right with with mass automation and and uh, mass production and the french revolution brought us political liberties that mm -hmm. really wasn't the norm beforehand right and this technological information uh, revolution has brought us so many opportunities that now a person in india could have basically the same knowledge as a harvard professor right that wasn't there it was just wasn't there now the only question is whether or not people are motivated enough to actually mm -hmm. come together and synthesize something of benefit right because technically if you look at it this way you can say 10 years ago or 11 years ago maybe the iPhone was introduced right and mm -hmm. so all of a sudden everybody has had a real computer in their their pockets right but most of the time they just use it to look at cat videos and and make photos of their junk right but some of the yeah. other people use it for more more than that yeah and I guess that's enough sort of for for a real revolution to take place because I guess nobody who could have predicted Facebook and probably mm -hmm. it wouldn't really be a, around if it wasn't for mobile phone or smartphones mm -hmm. right because because they just cornered the market for smartphones as soon as they arrived once smartphones arrived Facebook was already some a couple of years uh, established and then once f smartphones were there yeah. they saw how fast the use user growth is they just went for it and now it's I mean, what does Facebook even provide, right? Really nothing if you yeah. think about it. They don't create content. They don't yeah. create anything of, of substance, right? They just give you a platform, attract users, and then the users actually become the product, right? Because then exactly. they, they can sell the attention. Exactly. So it's a great business model. That's revolutionary. I mean, nobody could have thought about mm. that even, even 10 years ago. Nobody could have thought mm -hmm. about it. Now it's almost like the norm. Yeah, and it's still continuing. You know, if you if you look at uh, various applications, what they are applications about? It's about nothing. Even uh, there, there are some some huge surprises. Why this application is worth of billion of dollars? Because uh, how how this application? I mean, I'm not using it. I, I'm even not sure how it's called. Um, if you put your um, photos and the photos are, disap uh, are disappearing after 24 hours, it's Snapchat or whatever. I you think know, so. Something, something, something like that. And I, I remember no one, absolutely no one um, could expect that, that this application would be successful, you know, because, okay, what, what, what is attractive well, in this? And there, there, are, there are, it's an enormous amount of, of, of such applications that you, you couldn't predict that okay it would be successful because what you can use for and then and then okay human being is such a totally uh, creature you know um. <laughs> yeah. that's the that's the beauty of it all the, that the technology actually shows us how 
human behavior really works. Mm-hmm. It's not because it's it's sort of the ideal to think that well most people people are rational and and they do everything with thought out mm. actions when in reality they're just emotional with children yeah it's just really like dogs who can talk almost and yeah. And, and yeah that's the funny thing because before uh smartphones we didn't have the opportunity to actually capture that nonsense so much but now it's the option to capture all almost all the nonsense yeah. right and to actually see a better picture of ourselves as as a society as humans yeah and no. then afterwards then now come the new generation professors professors and scholars and say all right how can we actually make use of this right how can we actually establish those ideals that we mm-hmm. for decades or for even millennia had in our minds right because now we are able to put theory against practice and then synthesize something of value for for most of the most of society mm. and it's it's really i think generational because this generation of professors they barely can type a, an email right but the next generation should be able to actually produce content to actually evaluate statistics user uh, in well basically user interaction everything like that right they they have to know the metrics this is my hope this is my hope that the, that the next generation will be completely different from um perhaps not completely but different from the previous one i i would like i, I want to wish i, I wish that the, this, this generation um wouldn't become as 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 their fathers you know and wouldn't be galvanized as they were you know be, because this is this is the only risk that's the, that, that's the new generation becomes as the previous ones, and, and for me, it's, it's 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 the history how the history works. Let's say, but yeah. Well, that, that's going to happen. Well, that that is that is why I I, I, sa- I said about the revolution thing <clears throat> because no, I mean, there's no no one really, for instance, in in my uh, ancestry who could actually advise me on how to do a podcast, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. It's just. It, it has never been before. I mean, people have talked with each other for time yeah. immemorial, but recording, distributing, actually editing it, all of those things, it's just something that, yeah, once once somebody has that new option and starts to use it, there's no real looking back at anything. It's just that, all right, nobody has done that in, at least for in this type of environment. All right, let's see what the future holds, in a sense. Because most of the time, when, for instance, you uh, spoke about the, um, well, your interest in movies, for instance, right? Most of the time, I, I expect people to actually say that, well, I'm more like in- interested in, and then just counting some some politically correct, no, but like sort of, giving me answers that they expect I I would like to hear from them, right? Whereas you just said, well, films, well, films, because I think you are the first one to to, to speak about uh, films so extensively. Okay. How, yeah. many, how many podcasts um, did you record so far? Roughly? Well, I think, I think this is the 57th. Okay. I think it's the 57th. But I mean, the reason why I, I thought about doing podcasts is because I beforehand, I mean, I met still, I don't know how many hundreds of people, right? And and uh, I usually I told people if I have more than two sentence conversations, it means it might it might get into the hours, right? <clears throat> because it's, it's if sometimes somebody just comes and so hello, there's the uh, there's the kitchen, there's the bathroom or whatever. That's it. But if we get to talking, it's just mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, I think that's the that's the beauty of the the digital equipment nowadays. You can actually capture it. You can actually capture it, and then not just for the participants. There's there's an option to actually look back at one point in time. Uh, but but it's also some sometimes it's just interesting to to see who is interested in the same topics, right? Because you would never guess. Because um, literally, I mean, it's it's just 
now I guess the the best option for us is to try to get a grasp of whether or not we do people we know the people around us because mm-hmm. because um, yeah I bet for for this episode it will turn out that some someone I know is also actually into Bergman films or whatever and yeah I, I didn't really know that for instance mm-hmm. yeah anyway it seems like we did a good two hours yeah so, two hours five minutes yeah any any last uh, thoughts um that's... no I'm um... Can we can we look uh, for you being in the future in Poland or still being in Ireland? I don't know, or maybe somewhere else even. Um, I do not plan. Um, you asked me about my, my 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 future plans, and I said I'm very very grateful that I do not have to ask this question to myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, but uh, for time being, I do not plan to to return to to Poland. I'm, I'm not very fond um, of the of the political of pa- the sausages. Pa- <laughs> <laughs> I, I try not to eat meat. I'm uh, unfortunately I'm not vegetarian uh, yet, but I try not to eat meat. So Polish kielbasa, it's not something. Polish that, people do like also dairy products, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so this is, I need big to. Dairy I need to. I need to uh, buy some some uh, uh, Latvian um, yeah, Latvian yogurt. I know you uh-huh. have very nice yogurt. I I, I drank uh, kvas. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Uh, well, we know, not, we know. It's not really the the old school class, right? It's it's a lemonade. I think nowadays. so. I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you if you think that the kvass is uh, actually from a proper kvass should be uh, from from bread, really from from fermented bread. It's it's mm-hmm. something something. That right That's now rare. it's lemonade. That's rare. Yeah, that yeah. Is lemonade. But um, uh, yeah, it's still still something something that is that is local. Uh, uh, but I believe we have we have in Poland. In Poland, is sold this uh, this uh, um, Latvian Latvian kvass. But it's not something that that we used to drink in Poland on a regular basis, let's say. So it's a local flavor to me, and yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to try some some Latvian yogurts as well. I've been to Central Market today, and mm. I was very very impressed um, about uh, uh, the fish section. I was, uh, it was amazing, really. What fish and uh, how they are prepared? You have not only herring but also mackerel, and very nice mackerel, mm. and also salmon and some other fish that I do not know I, um, what they were because I do not speak Latvian. But uh, amazing, really. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps um, you you take it for for granted and you even. Well, I would have guessed that we have the same types of fish that you would have in Poland. So we have mackerel. Ireland. We have mackerel. We have oh, uh, we have mackerel. We have herring. Uh, but um, yeah, a, a lot of a lot of. But but the the way how how they were prepared, how they were smoked uh, on the on the window display. Uh, in well, the, that might market. yeah, that might be a, a particular because many many uh, fishermen do like to smoke them. Uh, mm. And then, then so I'm, I'm such a foodie, so I, I always, when I when I travel, I always try to 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 try something something local. I'm I'm a huge foodie. Hmm. Well, I guess then, yeah, smoked fish might be something regional. But mm. I would guess in Poland you have everything. Yeah, yeah, but I think everything. I think here you have you have you have more you have more I'm fish. Not sure. I think so. Usually, think so. when people ask me what I could suggest to them to eat in Latvia, mm-hmm. specifically regional mm-hmm. cuisine. I tell them. I ask them, "Have you been to Poland?" Yes. And then you know our cuisine. Really? Have yeah. I, I always use Poland as an example. I think Poland has everything. I really do. I really mm, think okay, Poland has everything. Because because many times, let's say for instance, the people who come to Latvia, they haven't seen those. Um, uh, how do they call it? Uh, sweet cottage cheese or something like that. Uh, those 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 small uh, sweet the, well they are filled with cottage cheese uh-huh. right but they are sweet and with a chocolate cover so usually people don't recognize that but I think oh I know Polish, pe- Polish people know that but we know that because because there are a lot of a lot of those uh, bars from from Latvia because mm-hmm. this is something something from Latvia and also from Hungary in Hungary it's called Turo Rudi Turo it's um, 
Uh, well, Lithuanians uh, also have that. Oh, really? So, uh, but but in Poland, uh, we didn't have it in Poland, to be honest. And if I'm you sure. if you go to the uh, no, I'm I'm hundred percent sure because uh, I try it for the fir- first time um, being in Hungary. Mm. So and uh, I I really love to Rudy. And right now, if you go to a Polish grocery store and you find this this. Uh, bars uh, covered mm-hmm. in chocolate from from the cottage uh, sweet yeah. cottage cheese. Uh, they are from Latvia, mostly mostly from Latvia. There uh, there are no Polish bars. Perhaps they are. Uh, That's they are going weird. No, really. Why really. would why wouldn't Poland just start know, producing know. themselves? Maybe then? maybe maybe we are going to to produce it. But but even if because I've if, heard because I've heard of Polish uh, dairy refineries coming even to Latvia to buy up the milk. And uh, Latvian dairy farmers selling to Polish refineries their milk. Really? Yeah, because I mean, uh, Pol- uh, Poland has a big, big dairy industry. I didn't. I even didn't know that. I thought that we we have enough our own uh, or our own milk, but it turns well, out so that we. I guess uh, so much of a valuable commodity. Mm, it might be lucrative for them. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So no, no. I. So you say fish. Fish, yeah, Fish. The, the, I, I was very impressed. Uh, uh, saying all those all those fish uh, also smoked and and also marinated uh, on the on the window display in, in Central Market, it was great. Well, I guess on that note we can we can. Uh, and it on on great ta- looking oh, and, and great also, tasting also, fish. Also, also, I, I would like to try uh, beer. I I, I uh, purchased. I'm I'm more a wine person, but but being in in Latvia and and, and, and looking for for a, for wine, it would be weird. So did I did I, I ask you how did you choose to actually come to Latvia uh, yes. for for the first time? Well, no, no. What I mean is, uh, you said you didn't, you haven't been to the yeah. Baltics at all. Yeah. So what was the Latvia? Why why was Latvia? The well, I, I I had to I had to choose the first country, and it was Latvia. Let's go for Latvia. But was it related to the most e- the the easiest, most convenient uh, flights? Uh, most convenient, yeah. I, I as as well as I remember the Dublin Riga. Yeah, somewhere. exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, I have several um, days off. Um, uh, uh, every year, and I need to to uh, choose it very carefully because I I wish I have I have more, but unfortunately I have only twenty seven uh, days. So yeah, and as well as I remember, there um, I, I wanted I wanted to to go to any of uh, Baltic countries for uh, only for a weekend because I cannot uh, right now uh, I cannot afford uh, for longer because or or the vacation um, already mm-hmm. planned and uh, yeah and as well as I remember um, uh, there were no uh, no flights uh, to Tallinn um, mm-hmm. on Friday and also to 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 to, to Kaunas or. Vilnius, um, and so yeah, but they were uh, they were uh, to Riga and yeah. Yeah, good yeah. to know. Good yeah. to know. Yeah, but uh, it would be great. It would be great to 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 to, to make um, being able to to make um, some longer vacation and then visit um, all three countries at once. They are because they are they are quite similar. Or yeah, so I would I would guess so. I mean, you could actually have a bus tour, and I guess. From Tallinn yeah. till till Vilnius, it might be I don't know ten hours or something like that. Okay, ten so hours. It's not that. Uh, okay. I mean, it's a it's a fairly short ferry. distance. Okay. But with the buses and fairly fast. Mm. So yeah, from because uh, from Riga till Tallinn is to Tallinn is four hours as far as I know. Okay. And it's a convenient. You have the option of having almost like a luxury type bus mm-hmm. for uh, for a reasonable price. Yeah, just so you you sit there four and a half hours in a nice comfortable chair, right? Nice, nice perhaps conditioning. More, for, perhaps more space for for legs than than in a Ryanair flight. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. I mean, Ryan, Ryanair is not necessarily known for <laughs> for, for, for for yeah for good service, yeah, for, and, and uh, quality foot, foot space. Yeah, that's for sure. Thanks. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. It's been more than two hours already. Paradise. Right. Yeah, <laughs> loads. <laughs>